All right, let's start this off with uh, Francis Brabazon poem, and this is uh, called All in All. I knew there was another one. <laughs> <laughs> Sing your inspiring call. You say the lover exists only in the beloved. The beloved is all in all. Each song is sufficient in itself. Whether or not by others it is heard. person who introduced 
introduced me and said my music is like an earwig. I yeah. have to do this. <laughs>
And all of this was gobbly, gobbly group to me. But I was fascinated by this space. Still fascinated by this space. So I went home. Uh, no, I went to another class, which was unusual for me. <laughs> and then after that class, I was walking through the auditorium, the beautiful auditorium, an old, you know, 1900 auditorium. And there's Rick Chapman again giving a talk in the auditorium. And uh, I saw a friend of mine sitting in listening. So I sat down next to him and I said, what do you think about this? And he went, so I sat through two talks about Mayor Obama. <laughs> had, no, had no idea what, what, who he was, what he meant to me, but I was interested in the talk. But I was more interested in going home and stretching a canvas that was about three feet by four feet. And I started, I remember, I started around five o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, and spent the whole night into the morning, till about nine o'clock in the morning, which is, was not unusual for me, staring at Bobby's face and painting his picture. <laughs> so my initial contact with Mayor Baba was to go to two lectures and then stare at his face for 12 hours. 14 hours, actually. Um, and I kind of forgot a little bit about Mayor Baba, you know, sometimes you do that. And um, things happened, and then I became, a left, I became desperate to find God. It didn't connect Mayor Baba to that search, but this is two or three months later. Things got very quickly speeded up after I heard about Mayor Baba. And I was going to Wiser's bookstore, which was a metaphysical bookstore in the Greenwich Village. And as I was walking down the steps, there was a notice for a Mayor Baba meeting, and I remembered the name. I found out later that it was placed there 10 minutes before I arrived. Yeah. It was by Sheila Krinsky. True story. So what I really want to tell you about is my first Baba meeting. Yeah. It was at the Carnegie Recital Hall in New York. I brought a friend along for basically for protection. <laughs> and uh, he didn't know anything. He had never heard about Mayor Baba. He had no idea. I didn't even tell him what we were going to do. I said, just come, come with me. <laughs> this is an interesting thing. You might find this interesting. And uh, it, was a, it was the same picture of Mayor Baba in a big frame, you know, this picture. And my friend sat down, and I could see something was half out of the corner of my eye. Uh, something was happening to him staring at Baba's face. I didn't find out later that Baba was uh, coming alive. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't get through the door because I was met at the door by Adele uh, Walken McEwen, <laughs> who I'd never met. She trapped me at the door. And for those of you who know Adele, she can do it. And she said to me, Oh, we never get any young people in here. Because <laughs> again, this is this is probably September of, of uh, 1967. And uh, as she's talking to me, I notice she's wearing a brooch. <laughs> and I'm, I'm an artist. I mean, that's what I do. I've done it my whole life. And I consider myself a, a seeker in the arts. So anything that's visual interests me. But I couldn't make out what the heck this thing was. She was wearing a brooch, but it was the, I couldn't figure out what the materials were. So I'm looking at her brooch as she's talking. I wasn't, I'm not listening to her at all. And then she notices I'm looking at her brooch. And she says, uh, oh, you like my brooch? I said, well, it's very interesting. What is that? She said, oh, those are Mayor Baba's fingernails. Because when Baba had the women in seclusion up on Maribod Hill in the tank, the water tank area, and he'd go away for long periods of time, they would make things out of whatever they could find. Pick pieces of Baba's hair they would collect, and his fingernails, and Nada made a brooch, and uh, Adele had it. So I'm ready to, I'm, I'm ready to fly. <laughs> is sitting there and it's clearly something's going on with him and I know I can't interrupt whatever is going on so I said well, that's, that's really nice <laughs> so I sit down and a, a little guy 
uh, with a German accent, Fred Winterfeld, but I didn't know Fred Winterfeld, but he was like five foot three and, you know, bald and, and rotund, said, Even now, here's the party. And he, and he has a little, a little 78 record player. He opens this up and he puts this record on. Now, I'm telling you right now, I am so freaked out. But I'm thinking, it'll be good. I just sit here. And... There's a couple other things that happened. Like, I, when I went to Wiseman's bookstore to find some books, remember I said I was going down the steps and I saw the meeting, I saw the strangest looking woman I'd ever seen in my life. I was just staring at her. And of course, when I went to the Baba meeting, there she was. <laughs> And believe me, it wasn't a death. <laughs> anyway, so this little gnome of a man comes out and and he puts this thing. Now I have no background in Indian music at this time. I don't know. And all of a sudden, I record it's been scratched a million times and it's this drum beat and there's a group of unprofessional singers you know singing this party and it comes to the end of the record and I out inwardly remember saying to myself thank God that's over Fred takes the record turns it around, and puts it back on and it continues because in those days they all you know the record 78s would run very very short periods and that's how they had the complete arc on two sides i don't know if any of you remember this or if you're back from those back days so he plays that and then i'm so stunned and i'm looking at my friend and he's staring at Bob's picture and he's got this big smile on his face and he's staring and he's staring so i start staring at Bob's picture i figure something's happening i want to get a part of it no. Nothing happened to me. I just, you know. Then the speaker comes up. And the speaker was a guy named Michael Kahana. Most of you don't know. And he's one of the old, you know, the Bible lovers from the from the late 40s and 50s. And they read a discourse. And I remember to this day the name of the discourse because it's the most obtuse <laughs> discourse in the discourses. It's deeper aspects of spiritual sadhana. <laughs> Well, it's, I remember him saying spiritual stuff. So when he was talking about, he was reading this discourse from Maribama. I didn't know head from tail. I had no idea what was going on. Um, so I just sat there and waited for it at the end. And um, when it ended, I went over to my friend, a guy named Danny Perlman, and I said, what do you think about this? And he said, that, that picture, he was winking at me. <laughs> he said, that picture was glowing. <laughs> Didn't you see that? <laughs> Bob loves to mess with me, and he, so he was messing with me on a number of levels. <laughs> so I tried to sneak out. I said, Danny, let's go. Catch the sun, let's go. As I'm going out the door, I get, I get corralled by the Luck Brothers. <laughs> now, Irwin Luck is, Irwin Luck is unusual. But Eddie was from another place. At this time, in 1967, as far as I could understand from the conversation I was trying to have with Edward Luck, he never answered in the first person. He would only answer in Baba quotes. <laughs> no, it's a fact. So if you said, how you feel? He'd say, Baba says that this physical body is an illusion. <laughs> and feelings are insignificant. <laughs> and if you said, you know, um, whatever you ask 
text and he would quote, he would make a miracle. So I'm really, I'm just, I'm at, I'm at it. So Beryl Williams, who was um, another, uh, uh, a nice uh, lady who uh, could clearly see I was in distress, <laughs> came up to me and she put her arm around me. She said, we're going to go to the Horn and Heart out across the street from the, was, I don't know if it was a Horn and Heart, it was some, some, you know, luncheonette. And uh, when I sat with her, um, she was dispensing Mayor Baba pictures, touch and bless pictures by Mayor Baba. And she was a very, uh, she had met Baba many times, and she, she was a, a black lady who um, was just, and I, I was telling Lolo, I, I, I've been raised in the black community from the time I was about a year old until I was seven, so all my relatives were you know, black or Puerto Rican. So, I mean, I felt completely at home with her, and she could tell that I was, she knew the Luck Brothers enough, <laughs> and uh, even Adele, so to, to, to kind of calm me down and go around. I remember Ed Woodluck was sitting right on my left-hand side. He had ordered a hot chocolate. He never drank the hot chocolate. I watched the hot chocolate go from steaming to cold over a period of an hour, while he quoted Mayor Bob to every question. Extraordinary. So I just couldn't wait to get out of there. I wasn't interested in this Mayor Baba. It was, it was I didn't have any, I had no context. Um, but Beryl, I think Beryl either told me to get the God Man by C.B. Burden or she lent it to me. I can't remember. But I got a hold of the God Man within a day or two or, or that night. I can't remember. She might have lent it. And I remember staying up all night reading that book. And at the end of reading the book, I knew where it was. At least, at least as far as I, you know, as far as my beginning of the path was concerned. So that's how I heard about there. Yeah. So that painting you did, where is it now? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I probably painted over it. Oh. I was taking it too literally. I was trying to. Uh, I, I, Previous to this meeting with Mayor Baba, I was doing automatic painting. And I had done this huge painting of, if you looked at it carefully, it was, I mean, it was like five feet by seven feet. And it, it was like a large head, but it was broken down into, into various forms. It was, it, it was almost like evolution and involution, but in a very, very mixed up kind of way. So that's how I was, at, I was trying to approach this wonderful picture. Um, and also try to instill in it the idea that consciousness could be complete. So that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I lost Danny Perlman, the boy, the, the, the boy that was with me. Yeah. I have not talked to him in 50, 45 years, but the last story that I heard from this guy is a fascinating story. He joined the army, and when Baba called us to Darshan in 69, he was broke in Germany, got in a card game, and he couldn't lose. He made the, he, he sat in the card game for about two hours and made all the money to him. And then he told his commanding officer he had to go to India, could get some time off. And the guy said, of course. <laughs> And if you've ever been in the military, and I have, that's the, that never happens. Mm -hmm. So he paid for his trip to India with with card rings. That's a nice story. Wow. Nice story. All right. Um, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of. Uh, somebody wants to hear "You Alone Exist." That's so long. I'm, I, I'll try to get to it, but I wanted to do. I want to do a hafez for you. That. Um, you should say Let me get a thing, finger picture. Okay, so this is a translation by one of my favorite uh, Hafez translators, which most people do not know, a guy named Richard Le Gallien. He has a French name, but he was a, a, a New Yorker, I believe, or he was an American, at, in the uh, late 19th century. 
And there's a book of his translations called Wine for a Breaking Heart. I just, this is a, 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 what I do with these translations is I just put them more in a, in a, in a song form. In this case, however, I also, instead of saying just beloved, I use Bob's name.
This is called Promised Land. It's one of my favorites.
just tell you how this song came about. She's showing you better. Let Lolo tell you how this song came about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lolo. Yeah. You wanted to know if he could upload you on YouTube live right now? No, no, no. no. I didn't see. Um, I, uh, as you can tell, I put a lot of stuff to Bob, to, to Bob's words to music. And I was reading While the World Slept. And in the beginning of While the World Slept is this poem that Baoji explained. Mayor Baba wrote, along with giving Baoji some a chance to add some couplets. And that Baba finished the song pounding out the rhythm, pounding out the rhythm on his on his leg. And um, I was looking at this thing thinking, this is impossible. How can you, except that in that quote from Bao, Baba told, you know, he said to Baba, these, some of these descriptions, people are not going to understand these descriptions. And Baba said, it's, it's all right. It's as it's supposed to be. In the future, this, this, poem will be sung in every house. So when I heard that, I thought, what's a song? <laughs> so I looked at it, and I looked at it, and within 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I had it written. And now this is a long, long song. There is a, a, a much earlier version of this in song that Mani wrote the music to, but I, I have not heard that. So. If you want to have a call, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> 